Hello everybody. Um, it's nice to be back on YouTube again. It's been a while. I am now broadcasting from a top secret location on the other side of the world. So let's get started. Today I want to offer some criticism and a little praise of this book, Water for Sale. Now, uh, it's, uh, it was written six years ago now, or seven years to be, to be exact. But it's, it's well written, uh, well researched, a lot of great data. It's a nice, uh, easy, short read, as you can see. And, uh, and it's a really specific topic, an interesting topic. Uh, so let's get started. He starts by uh, saying something that we've all probably heard. Water <clears throat> is a basic human right, not a commodity to be bought, sold, and traded. And then he proceeds to just annihilate this argument, just blow it out of the water. It's fantastic. One, one thing you never hear from these anti-water privatization socialists is how much water is there in the world? Don't you think that's an interesting question? It was interesting to me. He's done the research. Not including salt water and frozen water, just looking at the fresh water there is, is uh, two million three hundred thousand liters per capita on planet Earth. Rainfall alone, subtracting the evaporation that happens as the raindrops are falling through the air, uh, the 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 water that lands on the ground from rain averages nineteen thousand liters per day per person. I think that's pretty amazing. There is clearly no shortage of water in the world. What there is, is a substantial excess of government. So, uh, um, the author, uh, Frederick Segerfeld, uh, he's done great work here. Uh, like I said, well written, well researched. Uh, we, we are different flavors of libertarian and I think those differences become, become quite apparent. Um, he's, uh, he's from Cato, or was with Cato when he wrote this book, and they're, they're empiricists there, uh, unlike the, the Mises Institute folks uh, who, are, who are rationalists. Uh, I think uh, economics is and must be a rational science. There's no time for that discussion now, uh, but I think that empiricism is useful. It helps people imagine what a free society might look like and how a free society might work, and being able to imagine it for most people might be even more important than making the rational case. So he offers a ton of examples. I'll, I'll read just one or parts of one. Uh, at the beginning of the 1980s, the Chilean government granted farmers, companies, and local authorities the right to own local water. This enabled them to sell it in a free market and affected them. The effects have been outstanding. Water supply has grown faster than in any other country. 30 years ago, only 27% of rural Chileans and 63% in urban communities, 27 and 63%, had steady access to safe water. Today's figures are 94 and 99%, respectively, the highest for all the world's medium income nations. Um, then, uh, oh, it, it, he goes on, he, he talks about how just the fact that water is sensitive to market prices causes people to economize water, you know, suddenly drip irrigation will replace spray irrigation when government stops controlling the price. Uh, he talks about Chilean agriculture. It has moved from low value activities such as cattle farming and cultivation of cereals and oleaginous, I don't know what that means, plants, to fruit and wine production, which is much more lucrative. Between 1975 and 1990, without any major infrastructure investment being made, Chile raised its agricultural productivity 6% annually, in, and today is the world's largest exporter of winter fruit in the, to the northern hemisphere. Pretty awesome. Uh, chapter 6 might be the most important chapter, uh, and uh, there he talks about the effects of supposedly free water 
that all these anti-privatization socialist control freaks are promoting. Their free water has caused uh, all kinds of uh, waterborne diseases among poor people who to whom it is illegal for entrepreneurs to, to deliver water. Uh, they talk about the, he talks about, writes about the uh, distance that poor people have to travel to get to sources of uh, safe water. He talks about um, just the, the, them waiting in lines. And there you see, you feel the importance of the argument for a free society and for commerce. Um, he talks also about absurdities. Uh, urban dwellers pay nearly a thousand times as much for their water as farmers do subsidies. And so rice is grown in the desert, a water guzzling enterprise at the same time that California cities are spending huge sums of money on des desalinization plants. That's the price of uh, free water. Oh, of course, the socialists will say what they always say, we just need to manage it better. We need a better leader. We need a stronger leader. We need more laws, better laws, strictly enforced laws. What that means implicitly is more police, more prisons, more batons, more tasers, more handcuffs. It's the road to surf them. He also notes that in many places the poor people pay, uh, pay 12 times as much for water as like the as uh, the government price because you know there's no one brings water to them so that he writes about that black market oh and this is a really interesting detail of course the black market comes to the rescue um, in India in India for example several states have quite advanced and in informal water markets the profit from this trade have been estimated at 1.38 billion annually. The problem though is that the trade is illegal. There's your, your free water socialists. Alright, now here we, we deviate as libertarians. Um, um, he, he, he talks about how great it would be if there was a, a free market for water, but then he makes these absurd statements uh, as far as I'm concerned. But it is worth repeating that public authorities are still at liberty to control the price of water supplied privately. Hmm. He departs from, uh, from the, the strict free market view even further, uh, even further with statements like, just a second. Water distribution is a natural monopoly, and private monopolies, unlike public ones, cannot be influenced through general elections. Lord help us if we're relying on general elections that... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even going to address that, it's just too painful. But he contradicts himself, you know, he says, uh, he, later he says, People would simply go elsewhere for their water as is common, especially among the billion or more people who at present do not have access to piped water. So much for the natural monopoly. Um, and uh, towards the end of the book, he, uh, he departs from a discussion of capitalism and discusses corporatism in its place. That is tragically... Uh, common with inside the Beltway libertarianism, although they do do great work. Um, so he comes to two very unsurprising conclusions. Number one, that private businessmen are better than government bureaucrats at delivering water to people. And number two, when governments contract with uh, companies to do water, there's going to be a lot of corruption. You don't need any empirical evidence for that, although he's an empiricist, so he went at it that way. Um, you know, you, I could tell you that rationally. Make that case. Uh, last thing, uh, back when I was uh, just still looking for my ideological footing, seems like a lifetime ago, uh, I came across a documentary called The Corporation. 
and uh, they very they upheld this idea of Bolivia's uprising, spontaneous Bolshevik uprising against water privatization. So he sheds a lot of light on that. Um, uh, um, you'll have to read it yourself. It starts on page 84. But that you encounter that these anti-water privatization people, they cite Bolivia quite frequently. But it's not all that simple. The the rise in water, the rise in price was not that big, um, as as they claim. Uh, the government, of course, was corrupt, and it required this private company that wanted to deliver water to also build a freaking dam and to hire, you know, the politically connected contractor to build this dam and just to, you know, that was the government scheme of uh, funneling money from this privatization. So that had a lot to do with increasing the price, don't you think? Um, and he also writes about how there were some interests behind those supposedly spontaneous protests. So, uh, so that's that. Hope you enjoyed my book review. Uh, I do recommend it. Um, uh, Water for Sale by Frederick Segerfeld. Thanks for listening.